Go, 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 let's get it I'm a trapping fanatic, that shit automatic So I cannot turn it on or off okay. Bitches all on my dick, then she hop on my dick I'm like, why you keep hopping on and off? Your bitch all on my dick, she be doing the most I tell her those bitches so extra And my gun up on me, but I run up on me Niggas, they wanna fight, they some bustlers Looks like you underestimated us, Sensei. Shino would kneel down to Kakashi as he would pour the medicine within his mouth. It was a cure for the paralysis. Their Sensei would get up. You two are amazing and you have great teamwork, but this is not a two-man team. This is when Naruto remembers Sakura. She just hid in the bushes the whole time and didn't participate at all. Damn it. I thought she would at least try to do it. Something at least. Sakura walks up to them and Naruto questions her. She explains that she was just too scared to get involved, fearing that she would just be in the way. Kakashi would then walk to them. Alright, well you guys still pass. So, let's get started with some easy missions around the village. I don't think we should do that, Sensei. Why is that, Naruto? Sakura will not reach her goals and become a strong shinobi this way. We need to train and improve on all our weak categories first. If you truly want to help us, we need to do this first. Kakashi thought about it as he would ask the other two what they think about this idea. As Shino looks at his sensei, he would speak. I'd like to improve a little bit more on my taijutsu. It still feels very slow compared to Naruto. Sakura would also agree. So for about a week and a half, Kakashi and Naruto enforced a strict training on the two of them. For Naruto's training, Kakashi would fight him one-on-one -on -one and correct all of his mistakes. After one of their training sessions, Naruto was defeated, lying on the ground. I'll see you tomorrow, Naruto, Kakashi would say as he would walk away. Catch you later, Sensei. I'm gonna rest here for a while. After Kakashi leaves, Naruto sits up. Alright, go ahead and come out. A root member appears right before Naruto. Lord Donzo has a message for you. He then hands Naruto the scroll and Naruto would take it home. As the next day, Team 7 meets up as they would head to the Hokage's office for their first mission. This is when Haruzen would give them the bridge builder mission. Naruto hides his excitement because this is the mission that Danzo had set up for them. Tazuna would walk into the room to see the team before him. He questions on if they're really capable of this mission and Kakashi reassures him that they definitely are. They would leave the village that day. And when Naruto goes to his apartment to grab his things, he sees a small blade with a note attached to it, as the note would then read, For Naruto Yuki, one of my best students, use it well. Naruto puts the blade on his waist, as he would say. Thank you, Lord Donzo. Naruto then heads out, and he has the note, well, in his bag, just as a reminder. When Kakashi saw him, it reminded him of the books that he read about samurai as the blade wasn't on his back, it was on his side. They would then head out as Naruto stood in the back so he could see everything. He stayed sharp and waited for anything that could happen. After a while of walking, Naruto noticed something different. Instantly, he reacted alongside Shino and Sakura as the two of them jumped to block a shinobi from the left while Naruto blocked one from the right. Who sent you here? It wouldn't matter if I told you because you'll be dead soon, the shinobi would say. Naruto pushed his opponent back and pulled out his blade. I shuriken would be thrown at the ninja who would dodge by jumping away. However, Naruto appeared right in front of him. You're too slow to be a challenge for me. He swings the blade, cutting the ninja. As he would then hold his chest, he would smirk. What a shallow cut. Did you really think that would kill me? He watches as Naruto turns around and begins walking away. Hey, are you listening, brat? This fight isn't over. The shinobi starts to run towards Naruto when his vision begins to get blurry. He then notices small amounts of ice on the blade of the boy, as he would then fall to the ground after noticing, as Naruto then tilts his head back. If you're wondering what happened, I shut down all the nerves within your body with my ice. Now, I think it's time to end this. While this was going on, Shino and Sakura were overwhelming their opponent. 
Shino was using his bugs from range to support his attacks while Sakura was setting up something. The ninja would flip away to avoid the attack from Shino as he looks down at the two from a branch. He tries to move but then he gets cut as he then looks over at the pink haired girl as she would hold up sharp wires that string from her fingers. The fight is over. As she moves her hands, it cuts the shinobi into pieces as the two would walk back over to Kakashi and they would question where Naruto was. Naruto regroups with them about a minute later and they all confront Tazuna about what's really going on in the land of waves. After a couple of minutes, he would crack under the pressure and he tells them what's really going on. They keep on traveling and make it to the land of waves. Once they get off of a boat and they get back on the path, they were attacked. Kakashi warns everyone to duck at the incoming blade. Naruto jumps in front of everyone and creates an ice wall that would stop the blade. Good job, Naruto. Naruto nods and instantly has to pull out his own blade to block a sword. Zabuza appeared right in front of him swinging the executioner's blade. Naruto pushes back and Kakashi jumps in to continue the fight for him. The fight between Zabuza and Kakashi goes on until both of them perform the water dragon jutsu. Both of their attacks will be frozen by Naruto as Zabuza would jump back a little confused as he points his blade towards Naruto. Hey kid, what's your name? Hmm. Naruto Yuki and don't you forget it. Is that so? Zabuza then creates a distraction as he would leave the area. The group makes it to the home of Tazuna shortly after and begins their training. Naruto decides to train on his own to perfect his sword ice style. Eventually he gets tired and goes to lay against a tree. When he awakens, a woman is standing right in front of him while crying. She kneeled down and held Naruto's face. You look just like him. What do you mean? Who are you talking about? You have to be a son. You're the spitting image of your father. You knew my father? Of course I did. After all, he is my younger brother. Wait, so that makes you my aunt? Yeah, I am. But you should come with me first and I'll explain some more. Naruto gets up as he's taken to the home of Haku, where he sees Zabuza sitting down, as when both of them notice each other, they both grab their blades and point them, but Haku stops them. Naruto wonders why Zabuza is here, and the two would explain their story, as Naruto then understands. I have a plan. Take me to Gato. They call him crazy, but Naruto thinks that they can take him out, just the three of them, and if they do need backup, He'll go get Kakashi. As the two of them want to question it, but that night they would go to the base of Gato. Naruto kicks down the door and the three would walk in. Without a word being spoken, they would attack. With all three of them, none of the other gang members could really compete. Naruto saw Gato trying to run away as he was standing behind 20 guards. Kid, you must be crazy if you think you can reach me from that distance. Naruto holds out his sword as ice begins to surround the edge of it. Frozen blade dance. Naruto dashes around the room swinging his blade, landing a cut on each of his opponents. After each slash, he moves closer and closer to Gato until he stops right in front of him. What are you? Naruto ignores the question and cuts him across his chest as he would then walk past Gato, all of the men that were cut by his blade, then turn to ice statues. Now shatter. All of the statues would then turn to dust or ice particles as Naruto puts his blade away. As Zabuza and Haku were standing there with shock on their face. Naruto then hangs out with them as he learns more about his dad. However, he doesn't get the name of his father just yet. He just knows more about him. Haku thinks that if Naruto didn't know the name already, then there must be a reason for it. So, she'll let Naruto find out on his own. Haku and Zabuza decide to stay in the Land of Waves instead of coming to the Leaf so that they could protect it from the shadows. 
but Naruto promises to come back and visit when he gets free time. Team 7 then journeys back to the Leaf Village where they report their successful mission to the Hokage who would recommend them the tuning exams as well. Kakashi would turn to his team. Well, it's up to the three of you on what you want to do. The two would then look towards Naruto. I think you know what our answer is, Sensei. We can't stop at just the rank of Ginin. We have to keep climbing the ranks until we reach our goals. The three of them would then sign up, continuing their training until the end of the day. While Naruto walked around throughout the village, he bumped into someone who stared down at him. It was Sasuke. He hadn't seen the Uchiha since the two of them graduated. Watch where you're walking, Naruto. That's some big talk coming from someone like you, Sasuke. What's that supposed to mean? It means that someone like you should watch your tone when addressing me. Don't tell me you think you're stronger than me, Naruto. I don't think that, Sasuke. I know it to be true. If you really don't believe me, I can prove it to you. Minutes later, the two were seen in an open area as Naruto looks towards Sasuke. Are you sure you don't want to back out of this fight? You have one last chance right now. Shut your mouth, Naruto. Whatever you say, Sasuke.